This is the first time in my life that I'm working on something that I believe it can really change our society. RSK, or Rootstock, is a blockchain that runs in parallel with Bitcoin. According to its founders, it inherits the security of Bitcoin while extending its functionality. Communities that are vulnerable, that don't have a stable currency, national currency. And we need to protect that. It's mined alongside Bitcoin by the Bitmain Bitcoin Mining Group and others. The RSK blockchain is different to Bitcoin in that it fully supports Ethereum smart contracts. So any yeah. smart contract that runs on Ethereum now can be executed on top of the Bitcoin network. Yeah, I guess, yeah. This, this is why the Bitcoin community is so excited about it. Crypto Crusades travel to Buenos Aires and speak with Gabriel Kerman, who comes from a background of finance, and Ruben Altman, founder and programmer, about the large percentage of the world without access to banking, their charitable incentives, and plans for further development of the RSK network. How did your adventure with blockchain and Bitcoin start? So my background is in finance. I worked in corporations, private equity all my life. Until in 2013, a friend of mine told me that La Bitconf, the most important Bitcoin and blockchain conference in Latin America, was happening in Buenos Aires. Just blew my mind. I never left the ecosystem since then. Can you tell us what are your passion projects now? This is the first time in my life that I'm working on something that I believe it can really change our society. I believe what we are building here is a new era of the internet that we call the internet of value. And hopefully it will bring the same benefits that the internet of information brought to our society, but now to the free exchange of value. In Latin America, we have 200 million poor people that are currently unbanked. It's 65% of total population, similar ratio that we have in the rest of the world. And blockchain technology and the internet of value is meant for them. What does RSK do? So RSK is the first smart contract platform secured by the Bitcoin network. Uh, when we started working on the Bitcoin ecosystem uh, many years ago, we realized that in order to promote financial inclusion and automated financial services, we needed to have automation from smart contracts. The only technology available at the time was Ethereum, and we wanted to have the best of both worlds, the security of the Bitcoin blockchain and the flexibility of Solidity smart contracts. Uh, so with that idea in mind, we created RSK. It's the first production sidechain that ever existed. Uh, it uses Bitcoin to execute smart contracts, but also allows Bitcoin miners uh, to merge mine and provide the same security to any token or smart contract uh, that is built on RSK that they provide already with the same infrastructure and electricity consumption to secure Bitcoin. The Bitcoin network is the first decentralized currency in the world. It was the first technology that enabled people to transfer value globally without intermediaries from all over the world, without having a single entity controlling those transfers, but relying on a peer-to-peer -peer network, relying on the trust of everyone that participates in the network. And that is done using a technology called blockchain. That is a completely new way of establishing trust between parties. Um, it's a technology that enables two people that don't know each other to trust themselves without relying on a third party. The same principle that is applied in Bitcoin to transfer value can be applied to represent any other kind of transaction. So, for example, I can think of not only transferring value to you, but also on representing a microcredit that is far more complex than just transferring uh, money from A to B. Uh, yeah, RSK is quite, would you say it's quite controversial and you know, well, do you think it's a controversial topic? Not at all, why? It's a, a federation of 22 companies that, that sign with a private key for the transactions right to decide what's right. So, you know, it could be argued that it's not decentralized. RSK has something very unique. 
is in a decentralized ecosystem, when you have different parties with different uh, economic incentives, where sometimes the miners don't get along among themselves and the exchanges don't get along very well with the miners, neither with core, and the miners or core don't get along, all the groups understand with the community that RSK adds value directly to Bitcoin. So we're bringing all the value from smart contracts to the Bitcoin network. And this is the reason why we have so much support from exchanges, from core, from the ecosystem, and also from the miners. We just put the economic incentives in such a way that every single member of the community benefit if RSK is successful. In the early stage of RSK, and before the drive chain opcode is implemented, the only option that we have to use Bitcoin as fuel is to use a federated solution. So the way RSK works is the following. You send Bitcoins to a locking account, those Bitcoins get locked, and you receive the same amount in smart Bitcoins with the same private key. So that part is very easy. You use the smart Bitcoins to execute the smart contracts. But when you want to release the Bitcoins that were locked in the first place, you need someone to release those Bitcoins that are locked in the Bitcoin blockchain. When the drive chain that Sergio developed along with Truthcoin it's implemented, then the miners would also be able to vote the release of the funds every time they mine a new block. But so far, before the soft fork is implemented and as I understand is being uh, reviewed by Core as we speak, uh, the only option is to use a federation or use a different coin. But we want to use Bitcoin, so the federation option is the only one that we have available right now. Because with RSK, what you have is that the store of value is separated from the business rules. So one of the problems that Ethereum has is that Ether was never meant to be store of value, but now there is so much value in Ether that the ecosystem gets really concerned every time we have an innovation on Ethereum or we want to improve something on the virtual machine. On RSK, those layers are separated. So if you want to do an ICO on RSK, you just receive the Bitcoins on the Bitcoin blockchain where the store of value should be, and you just generate the tokens on RSK. And the only fuel that you need in smart Bitcoins is enough to create the tokens and distribute them. But you don't have to have the value on the native smart contract uh, token, which is smart Bitcoin. Has all of Core been consistently supportive of the effort? I don't think Core has ever been consistently uh, supporting anything. It, it's not a, it's not a, a consolidated group. It's a, it's a number of different developers and they have their own opinions, which I think is great because this makes Bitcoin anti-fragile. We are big supporters of Core. We appreciate all the work that they've been doing and continue to do on Bitcoin. We know many of the Core developers and, and we like them a lot. Yeah, I think I read something like a tweet from Peter Taldos or maybe maybe Adam Beck talking about how sidechains sound good, but there's you know difficulties that come along with them. I think it's great that we are all uh, skeptical, you know. It's uh, and this is an attitude that we should promote, you know. As long as it's as friendly, peer reviewing and feedback, it's great that uh, people are skeptical and that challenge our intelligence and makes us better. And the other thing is that everything we're building is open source. So if someone has a better idea, they can just do it, take our code and improve it. Uh, so as long as we are working on open source uh, technology, I think if you disagree with what we're doing and you would do it different, well, you have the option to do it. Is all of the RSK source code uh, fully released in open source? Yeah. Might be a, a hard question, but um, with the uh, with Bitcoin having the script upgrade that's coming and the Lightning Network and second tier applications running on Bitcoin, mm -hmm. what space does that leave RSK, and how do you feel about that? We feel that Bitcoin is doing great and functionality on on Bitcoin. However, it doesn't uh, enable smart contracts on its full potential, so it doesn't enable uh, what we called in, in a tech jargon. Uh, to incomplete smart contracts. What RSK enables, it's not possible through those changes in Bitcoin. So there is still a lot of space for innovations such as RSK 
to occur on the Bitcoin ecosystem. And actually one of the big innovations that Bitcoin is enabled are, are side chains and hopefully drive chains in the near future. And that will enable to innovate not only through RSK, but also to any other platform that wants to, to try and, and to promote new technologies. What's a side chain and what's a drive chain? A side chain, it's, um, it's a blockchain that runs, let's say, in parallel uh, of Bitcoin, but using Bitcoin as the, or representation of Bitcoin as its native currency. Drive chain is the same concept, but the transfer of Bitcoins from the Bitcoin blockchain to the secondary blockchain, it's uh, performed through a technology that enables participants on the Bitcoin network to vote on those transfers of, of funds from one chain to the other. And an argument against uh, Turing complete uh, scripting is mm -hmm. that it leads to security flaws and Solidity is uh, full of them, I think. So what's your comment on that versus the Bitcoin script scripting method of offering non-Turing complete smart contracts? And your store value. Um, and uh, when you have a smart contracts layer, it's of course have more um, a, a bigger attack surface than Bitcoin. And that's why we, in our vision, we always see Bitcoin at the store of value layer and RSK as the smart contract layer that runs on top of Bitcoin uh, that will help for other purposes. And could you comment on G20 meeting that just happened at the beginning of the week? We spend a lot of time talking to regulators and explaining them what this is about and, and the potential of blockchain technology uh, to transform our society. It is very difficult when a regulator needs to issue a new law or regulation without knowing what they are talking about. We spend a lot of time talking to central banks. Some of the members of the community were very much involved with the, with the G20 meetings. So when I was, uh, I think, 19, I suffered from what was called the Corralito here. Uh, so before 2001, in Argentina, you had a law where they say that one Argentinian peso was worth one US dollar. And theoretically, if you have one Argentinian peso, you could then you go to the bank and exchange them for dollars and they were worth the same. Uh, at that point, the state ran out of money and it decided that the, the pesos that you had in the bank not longer worth a dollar and that you couldn't even take out the money from the bank. So uh, I was one of the people that suffered from that because I had all my savings in, in a bank account in pesos. At that moment in my life, I decided that at some point I would work so that these kind of, of events do not happen again. And uh, 20 years later, I, well, I uh, found the crypto and, and Bitcoin uh, and I thought it was a great opportunity to start working on that dream. Do you think it's quite significant that actually G20 meeting is happening this year here in Argentina? We in Latin America are very used to follow advice from central governments. So it's not going to be easy to be able to present a position and to be heard. Regulation, uh, it's meant and built for a legacy system. And technology does not respect any political barriers. We are one global community. We live in one planet. We are destroying that one planet that we have and 50% of global population lives in poverty. So we have global problems and probably blockchain will help us find global solutions. Do you think that uh, crypto should be regulated at all and how? I think we have enough regulation in our society and I think most of that regulation can be applied to crypto, no problem. I think that regulation, it's in partial responsible for this financial system that we have where 50 percent of the total population is excluded so when you regulate you need to think the potential impact of your decisions the way politics works is very complex the way lobby works is very complex and there's a lot of pressure from incumbents uh, that have been making massive gains in the past and do not find a way to make business with the microfinance new customers that are coming to the market now that one billion people will have access to cell phones and, and internet for the first time. And they will try to protect their current business model instead of understanding that there's a huge new market potential 
with microfinance and microtransactions, where even banks uh, can be profitable offering services to these new users, and at the same time, building a better society, more inclusive for everybody. I also co-founded a global decentralized accelerator called uh, Blockchain for Humanity at, uh, with other volunteers all around the world. And the main purpose of Blockchain for Humanity is to make sure that we identify and help those blockchain projects that can really bring value to our society and positive change, such as decentralized ID, financial inclusion, transparent democracies, transparent government and donations. Would you say that in Argentina, this kind of the, the Bitcoin community is really kind of like together and agree on most of the things or are there any internal battles going on? I think on a decentralized ecosystem, it's very hard to get people to agree on one same idea. Uh, and that's the beauty of it. Everybody has different ideas. Uh, everybody has different projects that they like the most. But there is a great uh, friendship among all of us. And, and there's something beyond the different projects that get us all together. And some of the most interesting projects actually were born in Latin America. So it's a very exciting time and I really hope that Latin America plays a leading role in the construction of the internet of value and uh, not just uh, a following role as we did in, in the internet revolution 20 years ago. Would you say that in Argentina and globally in South America the society as well as, as the governmental institutions are more welcoming blockchain projects and cryptocurrencies than in other Andreas Antonopoulos said something that I really like. He said, I travel all around the world and people ask me, why Bitcoin? When I get to Latin America, they ask me, how Bitcoin? So when you have a massive part of your population and bank and poor, it is very clear why we need change, why cryptocurrencies and blockchain technology are so much needed. So we are finding a lot of uh, opportunities and open doors and open minds from governments and regulators in Latin America willing to develop sandboxes and, and letting startups to play around and building real use cases to reduce poverty and, and build a better financial system. Mm -hmm.